YouTube, I can I can finally kind of show you him. No blood anymore. I just showered and re redid the bandage. Still a little bit stiff, still a little bit painful, but nonetheless, I am extremely happy with it. Thank you so much for all the love on it. YouTube, today is the Ironclad. We've done every other character. We did an over-explained on the defect. We've done a moderate explained on the Watcher and a moderately explained on the Silent. And so there's only one character left to really dive into, and that would be giving you an educational, in-depth run into the Ironclad. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to do more educational runs in the past, or in the future. Like I said, I've, I've been really, really, really enjoying it. So I think that discovering new archetypes and teaching you how to how to navigate that, I think that I can do multiple runs with every character, and you know you can learn something new every single time. I think that's really, really interesting. So if you want to see that, please like this video or, or comment down below telling me you want more. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, give it a like, give it a comment, and subscribe. I told you yesterday that we were getting a few less subs this month than usual, and a lot of you did subscribe, so I'm going to echo that here today. I really fucking appreciate every single one of you that has joined this community in the last year. You've changed my life. See you guys tomorrow. Mwah. Are you guys ready for some educational Slade Spire? Some educate... Don't say frick, all right? Jack, glasses or no glasses? You look smart in them. We need it for the education. All right. Class. Sit the f down. I don't want to hear nothing out of the people in the back, all right? Those in the front, they're obviously here because they're overachievers. They're going to be answering all the questions. Those in the back, shut the f up and just text each other on your damn phones. Just don't interrupt me. The Iron Man. The Iron Man is a fun character. He's got a lot of strikes. He's got a lot of attacks. Not a whole lot of ways to defend himself early on, but that is mitigated, obviously, by that. And also by the fact that you heal between acts. Health is a resource. Use it. Hexaghost allows you to be low on HP because of the turn to attack deals current health damage. Oh, my boyfriend has a kink for this. Okay, glasses off. Okay, educational spire. The Ironclad's a more of an aggressive boy. Uh, usually, people will try to remove defense on him early, but I actually find that that can be... Or uh, uh, strikes on him early, but I can find I find that that can be a little bit detrimental to you being able to take on early elites because he's very much uh, elites in the Act One are very much just damage races. So if you just want to bash your face into some dudes, it's uh, he's one of the best to do it for sure. Uh, usually, just as a reminder, going over I've I've done many of these tutorial videos. Usually, you want to find a path that is three or so fights because your first three fights are normal fights. Then you get a campfire and then you take an elite fight. Obviously, it doesn't seem like this is wording up to be that way. I can either take five fights, which will be two hard pull fights, and then an elite. Or I can take four fights, then an elite, then a campfire, then another elite. Uh, it's very difficult. These are very difficult paths. Or I can go this, like, pee-pee baby path. It gets me into an elite and then a campfire. And then another campfire and then another elite later. It's all dependent on what this whale option says. If I could get a feed, I would go this path, maybe. I don't know. But it's all depending on what I can get. Could get just raw max HP. Raw max HP is not terrible. It affects things like resting, but it also affects things like events that want to hurt you. Common relics tend to be things that deal damage a lot of the times. You get your Vajras, your Pennibs, things like that. Things that are very good early game. And it can take a bad relic out of the pool, so you have better chances of seeing better things later in the game. But 14 max HP, I mean, you think about it, Mango is 12 max HP, and that's a rare relic. So pressing this button for 99 gold is, like, super effective, right? Like, it's... You are giving yourself a fuck ton of HP for 99 gold. Is that worth it, though? Kind of. A little bit. I do like this pivot point of being able to take either a fight. Looking for good pivot points is usually a way that you want to go, right? Like, here, if I'm all of a sudden really strong, I could try to go this path. But if I'm not feeling very strong, I can go something like this. It's honestly very difficult. This is a very difficult start. This is not an easy start. You could also just press this button. And I think on none of the tutorials, I've pressed this button. Should I press it? I will not be pressing it. Someone just solo spammed that I should press it. So instead, out of spite for them, I'm going to take a random common relic. And I got a centennial puzzle. Absolutely a fantastic thing. So um, I want to look for something like a bloodletting or honestly any of the things on the Ironclad that deal damage to you that isn't combust. Because combust does at the end of your turn which then you draw three cards, discard three cards. And then, uh, yeah. Can you explain the benefits of relic swapping as the boss relic? Most boss relics are stronger than your starting relic. Most. And that's the usually the key, is most boss relics are stronger than the starting relic. Most. I just find it more rude that they solo spammed after I told them earlier today to please not solo spam. So, like, you know, I don't like rude things. I find it rude. 
All right, take the one damage here. Draw a billion cards. I have to take six here. I have to take six here for sure to be able to guarantee the, the kill next turn. Can we net lose one HP there? Not a big deal. Shrug is not bad. Seeing red though with Centennial Puzzle, I really, really like. Actually, I really like a seeing red with Centennial Puzzle. And again, we there's this like super safe path that we could take that dodges all elites if we like really didn't feel up to it. I do not mind seeing this fight here. This fight here, actually quite nice. Take a little bit of damage, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. And there's the lethal net. Lose one HP again. So many potions, though, which is incredible. Anger is fantastic to go with Centennial Puzzle. It's really good under this guy because this is just a, a massive damage race. So, yeah. Anger me. Absolutely, I'll press upgrade. I have so many potions right now. Fantastic. I'm going to go this way. And depending on how this fight shapes out, I there's a chance. There's a small chance, but I don't think there's a large chance. But that upgraded defend makes it so I don't have to take things like damage from this, this fight as much. Eesh. Next turn's gonna suck. <laughs> Next turn we might just get hit for like 17. Well. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes you just roll poorly. But there's that uh, Centennial Puzzle and the Anger doing well. Feel no pain looks fantastic with a seeing red. Sure. And yeah, now I'm definitely not going the danger route. This is nice. Not as nice. Let's take the purity, actually. Purity is not terrible here with the feel no pain. If you go up against um, Gremlin Knob, you can get rid of your defense. It's actually really good, I think. You can work on the burns in the, the upcoming fights. Feel no pain also works really well into the tri sentries, so we kind of have that one pe pegged. Okay, let's let's go for a little bit of something ballsy here. Could trade out my weak potion for an attack potion, actually. It's not a terrible play, actually. Because Tri Sentries doesn't really care about your weakening. Lagavulin dodges one turn of weakening. It's good against Gremlin Knob, but I think that the potion is gonna be the attack potion is gonna be better against Gremlin Knob. Feel no pain is worth it on turn one when you are on floor one when you have zero exhaust. Very easy to take a feel no pain before you take exhaust stuff. Very, very, very easy. All right. Great turn to use the attack potion. Our deck isn't shuffling yet. Let's take the immolate so that we get big, big damage. And I think you can purity away both of these. It does give us a little bit less block, but uh, I think it works out well. We could poke in and see what these are. Let's do that. How much damage do I want to take here? I do have two campfires, possibly three. So I think I can take a lot here. Let's pop this upgrade potion and just try to kill him next turn. Take 14 with the goal of you're dead. Love that. I love that goal. Bird face turn. Whenever you play powers, heal two. Okay. <laughs> Not really interested in any of these. Keep seeing the headbutt available, but until I have any sort of draw manipulation that is outside of the enemy's turn, I don't really want it. To be honest. I mean, it could be okay. But right now, I'm not super into it when I already have anger just to fill up my deck. And we can upgrade Feel No Pain. That seems great with the purity. Hello. Want to try... So I think if we do... We just want a purity for two cards. Because then we'll still draw next turn. We'll only block for 12. And then you draw a billion cards this turn with a good chance of one of those being seeing red. Which is block card and more damage. Love that. This turn sucks though. <laughs> Could be a great time to use my gambler's potion. Let's do that. Great time. A great time indeed. Did you stop hitting me? Anger doing work. 
Is Anger just a good early game card? It can be great late game too. It can be fantastic late game, yeah. Really, really good at um, if you have a lot of draw in your deck, if you have a lot of exhaust in your deck. A lot of things that allow you to, you know, target exhaust things. Things like um, Burning Pact, True Grits. Burning Pact especially. I mean, like, think about that, right? Like, you just want to keep having things to be able to utilize your effective draw with. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. Sentinel could be a good part of that as well. Do I like an Intimidate? Not really. <laughs> I kind of like this Thunderclap, though. More vulnerable. And a little bit of AoE as well. Hmm. What am I upgrading here? Am I upgrading Anger? Probably. I'm upgrading Anger. I think Thunderclap does get pretty good. Intimidate is a source of weak. So smart of you to say. Kunai! Fantastic. Yeah, upgrade the Anger here for more consistent damage. All right. Good shit. Good shit. And slap you. Don't get the kunai proc still. It's kind of annoying. Kind of annoying that we're like low rolling there, but is what it is. Is this just lethal? 11 plus 6 plus 9. 69. Not lethal. Fortunate. Flex is really good on the turn that we draw. Other than that, <laughs> not very good. But it's good on the turn that we draw a lot. But uh, I'm not super into it right now. Do I want to go for this other elite? We have zero potions right now. I do feel like our potion chance is quite high, though. We haven't seen any potions in a while. So I think we have a good chance of getting one in this next upcoming combat. And I do feel like I need more cards. That's the issue. Maybe I do need to take this flex. I don't know. Ugh, it's a tough choice, man. It's a tough choice. It's okay to limp into Hexagos, but you do have to get there for it to be good. It's a lot of AoE fights on the table. I'm not really excited about that. There's a lot of hard pool AoE fights that it could be. <laughs> oh, how I love the illusion of choice. Love that. Could kill one of these guys, but I think blocking is probably just better. Yellow pain's good. Two hour work call? Ew. Gross. Next time, just tell him to shut up. So we're blocking for four here, no matter what? Okay. Yeah, not really a, not really an angle to be able to kill all of them, unfortunately. Or kill both of these guys that are attacking me. So, it doesn't really matter which way I do it. I do get one dex, though. Ooh. Huge. Everything could have been an email. Isn't that, like, the go-to with work meetings? Shockwave. That is a fantastic card. Is it? Is it, though? Do we have enough vulnerable now that we don't need Shockwave and instead should take this Dropkick? Yes. Because Dropkick means more Kunai. Fantastic. Now we'll take a headbutt. Maybe. What is a good upgrade here? Seeing Red's really strong. Security could be good. Dropkick could be good. I flipped my car this weekend? Jesus, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Fuck. That doesn't sound fun. Nice. Yep. Ending this fight just below that is, is like super pog. If we take two damage here and then we go back to... We heal with the feel no pain. That would actually be the perfect amount of health. So we want to take this two and then be under 24 whenever we go into this fight. So we want to play this to heal, then end the fight here, and then we heal up to above it, and I fucked it up completely. Spot weakness, though, is good. I like a spot weakness. <laughs> For some reason in my head, we had uh, swapped our boss relics. I think because we talked about it a little bit. I like the spot weakness going into this fight, because this guy attacks most of the turns. So there's a good chance that we draw it on the right turn. Let's give it an upgrade, too. 
that should easily solidify us this victory. Again, don't forget it's easy. It's, it's okay to go into this fight at low HP. What a shitty starting turn, though. But yeah, it's okay to go into this fight at low HP. Wow. What a fucking dog shit opening, fact. opening Most draw. Not shoot artillery. I am not a marine biologist. I am an artilleryman. Hey, congratulations. Godfist snod. Thank you for the six, man. Appreciate the fuck out of you. Ooh, love that. That was awesome. That was really good. Another one? Okay. And this is where the anger and a little bit of deck shines, man. This is where it shines. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. All we need now is a consistent way to draw cards. That's consistent, right? That looks pretty consistent. Chad, I consistently look over at my Twitch chat right now and I just go, oh, damn, they're hot. All right, so I have not removed a single strike and defend. Playing this here is solid. The main issue, we lose our ability to kunai proc things. But the main pog is that we do have the chance to get more powers. We have the chance. We already, with these cards alone, have the ability to proc kunai. Kunai! And two, we can get a lot of dis... Um, we can get a lot of uh, exhaust cards. There's a lot of exhaust cards in the, in the ironclad pool, so... Fuck it, let's press the Pandora's box. Usually I recommend that if you have all of your strikes in the fence and you see a Pandora's box, there's never a reason why you shouldn't pass it up. Hey, Shadows, all good, man. Think of a 37. There can be reasons, obviously, but I think that this is easily the best time to press it. If there's ever a good time to press it, it's when you have the most cards to transform. Another offering, a fucking Dark Embrace, a second wind. No, no, no. Fuck you. Take one of these. Hey, how about you take one of these, bud? Uh, this combos well with both Dark Embrace and that Whirlwind. Hogged. Yeah. This is amazing. Never play Combust, though, unless we've already proc Centennial Puzzle. Keep that in your mind, okay? Keep that in the back of your head. We could just go here and remove it, actually. <laughs> we could just go and remove it immediately. Damn, I'm sad that on this path there's not another Elite. But I kind of want to still go it and just, like, focus on upgrading cards. Because a lot of this game comes through with finding your strong points and leaning into them, right? And our strong points are now that we have no strikes and defends. We just have cards. But we want those cards to be better versions of themselves, you know? Just like I, every day when I'm here teaching chat how to play video games, I just want at the end of the day for you to be a better version of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Flirt. Sick. Not terrible. Dark embrace me. Seeing red to draw. Feel no pain me. Ooh. And check this out. Now we just do... We're going to get rid of so many things here. Boom. No. Not you. Boom, boom. Boom. I drew all the cards. And then that exhaust makes it a, an even 20. Love that. We can play Combust now, though. If I want to. No. You're one HP off? Ooh. I don't like that. <laughs> Not a fan of that, but look at this, though. Did you see it? <laughs> oh, my God. This deck is working fantastically. An armament. Wait, that just solves our upgrade problem. Because it's an, it's already plussed for us. Well, uh, if you're having upgrade problems, I feel bad for you, child. <laughs> so weird. This is really bad because this would proc our Centennial Puzzle, and that's obviously one of our strong suits, so let's not do it. What is a better path that we could go now? Do we want to go this super scary triple elite path? Yes or no, smiley face? Could go this double elite path that's a little bit cleaner. Just the fact that there's no elites over here, man. It's so dangerous, and if I and if I die to it, it'd be so embarrassing. Everybody's gonna point and laugh at me. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't take public ridicule very well. Like I'm, like I'm really, you know, I just I I, I get sad really easily. You know what I'm saying? 
We just have the ability to draw really poorly on turn one sometimes. It's my main thing, man. It's like, what if I get into the avocado fight and I draw very little on turn one? Like, if I draw one of my two offerings, hoggers. But if I don't, if I draw like boom, 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 I'm just like, ooh, 21 damage. Why do you think so much in a strategy game? One time that you shouldn't think is whether or not you should subscribe to Frost Prime ones in chat if you agree. And I get a based in chat, you know? Let's play that to get a little bit of healing and then let's just knock all these guys on the ground. Don't worry, it'll take five minutes. We'll get there though. Based as fuck, that's what I'm saying, man. I've been out here saying that. We can play Combust now. It's fine. Combust is good. Because if, if we win within two turns, Combust doesn't even... That is negative an HP. Yo, what up, Enrique? Thanks, fam. And look at that. We net positive than HP in that fight. Strength potion. True grit could be very, very good with what we're doing here. Why is it bad to play combust first? Centennial puzzle procs at the end of your turn, which will draw you three cards and then discard them. So it kind of wastes the centennial puzzle. But since I get offering every single time on my opening hands, then I can play it. <laughs> Just get really lucky every time is what I'm trying to say here. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel me? Oh, sorry, that was... Don't pay attention to the noise that just came out of my mouth, please. Please. Boom. Boom. Wait, if I had... Wait, never mind. All right. Not bad. Shrug or a dual wield? Dual wield can be really good for your zero cost blood for bloods, your, your drop kicks, your feel no pains. Wield me. Yo, give us have a good one, man. The book. The only thing I don't want right now is Necronomicon. Because it only combos with that, but then gives me a fucking curse. But in Critian, Nilri's is very slow, but I'll, I'll take a book. Let him book. <sighs> oh, it's, it's not good. I don't think it's good, man. Whirlwind? Yeah, it does do Whirlwind twice. <sighs> it's... Gotta take it for the content. Sometimes you just got to take it for the content. You know what I'm saying? And I think with that, upgrading Whirlwind is the best thing you could do. Because I think this, with Whirlwind played twice, can one-shot the slavers. Remember how I said we could have a dead draw that's really bad? Dead meat draw. Luckily, though, it does do the drawing for us, which is nice. Is nice. It's not all bad. Just kind of bad. Just kind of. Hopefully we won't die here. That would suck. I would say that wouldn't be ideal. Okay. Upgrade one of these. Look at this combo. You ready for this? You ready for this? Double play. Boom, boom. Goosh, goosh, goosh. Did you see that? Mm. That could be good to be played twice, but like also I don't even think I need it. I don't think we need it, honestly. Another true grit's interesting, but again, I don't think we need it right now. We just kind of keep going, doing what we're doing. You did it too fast. Could you do it again? Sorry, that'll cost extra. Need to pay your tuition a second time. Ooh! 
Bag of marbles, very poggers. A war paint, though. What skills do I have that I really want upgraded that aren't already? Purity would be good, kind of, sometimes. Dual wield, second wind, true grit. Oh, yeah, this is insanely good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want it to hit offerings, though. I didn't want it to hit offerings. It's fine, though. It should be okay. I think dual wield could be a solid play. I also just think the true grit upgrade to be able to target whatever card that you want. It's probably the best. I think bag of prep is, like, insane here. Possibly with a second feel no pain. Why don't you want a tid offering? Very easy to overdraw with a centennial puzzle. Yeah, spoon is so such anti-synergy. It's so bad. Because if things don't exhaust, you don't get your exhaust synergies. So you want things to exhaust. Let's take this. Let's take this. Let us remove bust me. Fuck yeah, this deck just got a million times better. Ooh! I do not mind being knocked unconscious here. In fact, I welcome it. I don't have any way to generate energy here unless I draw into it. So let's try to draw into it. Thank you for subscribing. Thoughtful face. It's technically energy? I was kind of hoping for my seeing red. Is there any way to guarantee that I draw it here? No. <laughs> there we go. Why did it just proc the book? <laughs> did you see that? Was that just me or did it proc the book? <laughs> a powerful fight with many rewards. So this is guaranteed to give you a bunch of money. A potion, I believe. Right? It always gives you a potion. Oh, it's because I exhausted the curse. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, you can see how we're consistently now overdrawing with the the thing. Dual wield this again. Dark Embrace seems sick. And then play this, this, this. Fucking honestly this. You just want to make sure to play all your powers if you can. Even if you're about to win the fight. So you can heal the most as possible. Incense burner. Love that. Um, if I was playing... This is me teaching you how to play. Okay? Not teaching you how to play like me. I am probably going to forget about that and never pay attention to it. Sometimes. Maybe I will. You, however, should. And try to set up for future fights that you know are happening. For instance, this is our boss fight. Usually this guy attacks on the first couple of turns and then doesn't attack for a while sometimes and buffs and summons and and then does the the thing. But if you were against like something like Bronze Automaton, you want it set to zero so that you can block the you can guarantee to block the big hit or things like that. But it, it has now been forgotten by me. Uppercut plus. I mean a heavy blade plus is sick too with the spot weakness. But what about an uppercut plus? Plus 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 plus. Yeah, I do think I'll take an uppercut plus plus with the Necronomicon. Five max HP seems fantastic. I'm going to press rest at the end of this. I was already planning on resting before this boss fight. And the Seramp. <laughs> do I want a happy flower? Happy flower combos well with a lot of things we're doing. Yeah, I think I'll take a happy flower. He's very happy to be a part of the crew. Or he's, be, he's happy to be left behind. Honestly... He's just happy to be included in any of the things that you're trying to do in your in your game. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just happy to be around. He's just happy that... Honestly, he's happy when you're happy. So, support your incense burner today, chat. All right, play me one of these. Next turn, the draw is not that good. Makes me want to play Whirlwind here and then Offering again. We can also save that Offering, though. I will play Whirlwind here for the Kunai proc, though. You can always play your, uh, you can always play your things at zero mana. 
We're opening for the Kunai proc. Hey, chat. Uh, does Frost Prime like so, uh, back seating? <gasps> hey, class. Answer me this. That's three draw right there. Love that. More draw. No, he absolutely loves it. Ooh, caught me. All right, another kunai proc. First Prime notable backseat lover. Ooh. And then this will proc our kunai as well because we'll play it twice. Normally, you don't want to kill both of these guys because killing both of them will, when they summon, uh, the, the collector always summons back to exactly two minions on the board. So normally, you don't want to, but there it was like, what am I not going to do? Double Whirlwind Giga Damage? No, of course I am. Hit me with an Offering, please. Hit me with an Armaments, please. We do not have Disarm in hand, so I would like to draw that. Or sorry, not Disarm. Dual Wield. Excuse me, that's what I was attempting to say there. Best part about Necronomicus is the fact that it can be an exhaust target multiple times. Which arm? This one. Goodbye. I think we net lost one HP in this fight. <laughs> All right. I'll take this Ancient Potion. We have a lot of vulnerable now. And the Ancient Potion could be very good for the rest of the game. What about a Bludgeon Plus? With the Molten Egg always seeing plus attacks. Is it, fun fact, you will only ever see upgraded cards in this reward and in shop rewards if you have one of the eggs. In shops and in boss fights, you will only ever see upgraded cards from eggs. Double Bludgeon is cool with Necro, but again, I don't think we need it. A lot of times, I think that people overtake things that, they, that are cool with the things that they have, but are not always necessary. And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind whenever you're thinking about crafting your deck is does this thing work like does immolate work yeah but i already have a whirlwind plus i'm already gonna be okay against reptomancer be just because of that like i have a billion offerings to guarantee to draw it on the turns that i want pretty much like so it's really not that necessary you could take the berserk here it's plus two hp it's not awful it does help your whirlwind plus could dual wield it but i think the the fact that i'm already Having some dead draws still, I don't think it's that good. I think this is genuinely a skip. And a lot of times, a lot of times it's okay to skip boss awards, man. It's just guaranteed rare cards. It doesn't mean it's the best. Ooh! Ooh! ooh, ooh. <laughs> Fuck. I love, I love a Sneko Eye because of the Necronomicon. But it does make your offerings less good. It does make your offerings less good. It does make the upgrade that I got on... Dark Embrace less good because normally if Dark Embrace costs three and then you armaments it, it'll put it down to one. Um, Sneko ever correct. Sneko is the second strongest boss relic in the entire game. Kind of. A good Pandora's box is the strongest relic in the entire game, but a bad Pandora's box is not the strongest. You upgraded Seeing Red too. I actually think because of the Seeing Red upgrade, I won't take Sneko here. Yeah, Runic Pyramid is the best is the best boss relic in the game. For sure. Your cards aren't high cost. So high cost cards does not mean that you should take uh that you should take the uh, Sneko Eye. Because Sneko Eye allows you to no longer care about the cost of the cards. It's all about the value of the individual cards. Is the value of the cards really, really good? Right? What are some combos that we can do? If dual wield, you have dual wield in your hand, and you have a, a one of your attacks cost zero. All of a sudden, you have three zero attack costs, or three, three zero cost cards. You have an armaments plus, and you have a bunch of unupgraded cards. Again, things like seeing red up, unupgraded, if it costs three, and then you armaments it, it will cost zero, right? Um, so then that can be really, really good. Armaments with a lot more cards. Armaments likes big hands, right? So that can be really, really good. Second win gets more procs because of that. Uh, purity gets more procs because of that. Pur purity away your expensive cards. Um, True Grit gets more procs because of that. It's going to more often draw with your Necronomicon. Um, your powers are going to be drawn earlier on in the fights, right? Uh, the things that it's bad with, anger, 
right? You don't, as you build up more and more anger, it's a low value card. And as you draw more, the cost being randomized, not that good, right? Three cost eight mana, not good. But three cost double played of bash with dub with, with six vulnerable, that's still pretty high. That's still pretty high effectiveness, right? So you're not looking at the cost of the card. Sneko takes away the cost of the card, looks just at the value of the card, right? Just at the value. Uh, Reckless Charge it would normally be a low-valued card, but I would not mind playing this for two because then it would put two uh, four-cost draw cards in my deck. Or two, sorry, two four-block draws in my deck. Not that bad at two mana. Three mana, a little bit harder to play. Two mana with Necronomicon, all of a sudden, not that bad, right? Gotta be a little dethinky there. And the more two-cost cards that you're playing, I always get a bad Dropkick. Dropkick doesn't have bad value here, right? Because at the worst, it's a one cost card. At the worst, at, at, at the worst, drop kick is going to be one cost play two or uh, one cost draw two. Because if you draw it for three, and the enemy is always going to be vulnerable, we almost always have the enemy vulnerable with this deck, right? It's going to be played twice with Necronomicon. Draw two cards, give you two mana back. One cost, draw two. It's a pommel strike that deals more damage, and Prox Kunak. Drop kick with with Necronomicon and Sneko Eye, really really good, high value. Right? If it costs two, it's just a drop kick. That's what I mean by you got to think about the value of the individual card and not just, oh, it's a low cost card, therefore it's bad. Did you learn something today, chat? Did you learn something? Now you got to take it so we can see it. I think with the with the seeing red already being upgraded, I think it's not worth it. Just this alone, I don't think it's worth it. And the fact that we have Centennial Puzzle with double offering, we're going to overdraw a lot. So, no. I, I don't think we take it here. It's a, it's a, it's, I am... I'm a Sneko simp. I'm a I'm a Sneko simp. Like I said, I believe that this is the second strongest boss relic in the entire game. Just the fact that you have two additional draw is is like already pogged up as hell. Um, but no, I, I, I with bag of prep, we're almost always going to be drawing some sort of offering or dark embrace something 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 on turn one. Um, we don't have the key already, so I'm not going to take the cursed key. Because I am required to open up this next chest. There's not a chance that I'm opening that I'm gonna open it up and get a normality. That can just ruin my deck immediately, even with all my exhaust synergies. There's so many times where I could play, I could draw into an offering, play an offering, draw normality, waste an energy, deal six damage to yourself. Absolutely not. Runic dump. We do not care what the enemy is doing. Our 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 method of playing is play our shit at the enemy, die. And we just exhaust things as we go. We don't care what they're doing. We do not care what the enemy is doing. Now, in hindsight, there is a shop literally one floor along the burning elite path. <laughs> that, so, in hindsight, you could have taken the cursed key here. It would have been fine. But you never, you can never know that, you know? You can literally never know that. So, I think I'm going to go this way and aim for either taking that late shop or an additional elite. Because um, you have the shop in Act 4, so it's all good. And this, hopefully, we can find a good event, like maybe um, an extra rare relic or something. So, all right, here we are, going far to save all that we love. If you can, draw a full hand before you play your armaments. Usually good. Oh, I think these guys are just dead. <laughs> Heart of Iron. Fantastic. Love that. Uh, Pommel Plus, for sure. With four energy, I love a Pommel Plus. Did you know that Pommel Strike is one of the very, 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 very few cards in the game that upgrades both draw and something else. There's other cards in the game, I think, that upgrade the... Like, I think um, uh, Prepared upgrades the amount of discard, but that's not necessarily a buff. It's kind of a buff. But Pommel Strike is an OP card. There's not a whole lot of cards in the game that upgrade both the amount that you draw and also, like, a damage number or another another number in a buff direction. It's a very, in, it's a very good card. Very, very good card. Cut Through Fate does scry which is kind of draw we move on we move on we move on so spot week this is a really really good effect to see if the enemy is attacking right because you can go now this guy's always attacking so you always it's, it's always gonna it's always gonna do the thing but you can you can you can tell <laughs> you can tell And once again, 
Necronomicon, poggers. <laughs> you could take a second seeing red here. It's not terrible, but it's bad to draw it early. I do think a shrug it off can be well, uh, can do well with the amount of uh, decks we're gaining, but I don't really think it's that necessary right now. Potions? No thanks. I really like my potions. Both of these are quite strong. A shop, not terrible. Uh, orange pellets is very, very strong. It wouldn't have been as strong if we had taken Sneko. Because Sneko can get removed, but then it will keep the randomized cost. So if it's a bad cost, it's going to remain a bad cost. Uh, could take a second Dark Embrace as well. It's not a terrible play. Do I want a second Dark Embrace? We have so much exhaust. We just we we are so much stronger when we have one Dark Embrace in play. We're going up against this guy first, so I don't think so. I think going up against him first says no. Do I want to remove my anger right now? Not really. Could take another pommel strike, actually. Yes. Yes. Travel to the boss portal immediately? I don't have the keys. Wasted floor, but it's fine. Let us upgrade the dual wield. <laughs> so this guy never attacks on turn one. Just keep that in mind. We to keep him vulnerable, so I'm gonna use this. I'm also gonna do one of these. Um, and I could actually. The thing is, is these guys guarantee to give you wounds. And so that's what makes me really want to take them out right now. Um, Because I could technically um, not. I could technically leave them up. And then uh, play double uppercut here to weaken them. But I think what I actually want to do here is potentially dual wield. Do I want to dual wield? Mm. I could dual wield my whirlwind in order to be able to guarantee to draw it on future turns. But I think that might clog my deck too much. Because I'm going to play Anger here as well for a... Um... Oh, no. I could just play Whirlwind twice for the Necronom or for the Kunai proc. Never mind. I don't need to play Anger. Also, my Hyena. What up? A decent draw here. Good draw. Good draw. I probably could just focus you down. I'll be honest. Drop him. Are you attacking? You are. Okay. There's that knowledge. And I very much love. Exhaust. Everything. Draw. Everything. That whirlwind doing work. Maybe I underestimated it. Bloodletting? Bloodletting is literally just offering kind of. <laughs> I do like bloodletting. Bloodletting's great. We are filling up our hand often. That might be the final card that I add to this deck. I'm going to recall here. Usually, if you have plenty of campfires coming up, you can recall. Uh, but I don't. I might want to rest at this one if I if I go a more aggressive path. So. Keep. Not bad. And I do think I could take this aggressive path. So let's do it. All right. This guy's annoying to find. So let's just see if we can one-shot him. One thing we can do, though, is, is save the spot weakness for the end of our turn. It's a little bit unorthodox to save spot weakness for the end. But bear with me. Blood Angel, brand new fucking prime. I love that, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, dual wield here goes great. With the... Dropkick. Yep. Drop two. Thanks. Sucks that I haven't drawn any of my receptacles of, of exhaust synergies. Tragix, thank you for the 11. Zelion, thank you for the 5. Thank you for Just an average YouTuber viewer here to pay my content tax hey. in the form of Bezos Bucks. Ones in chat, if you think they're above average, you know? <laughs> I think you're above average. Okay, so here's the big play here. Instead of focusing on one-shotting them, we can actually focus on accruing enough block that we can always block what they're gonna do, right? And then, right now, we don't we don't know what they're doing, right? We can peek. 
So, the way that we should do this is peek now. They are attacking. We know that we're not getting cursed. And now we're good. Wasn't Whirlwind lethal? God, I'm trying to sh I'm trying to show off different things in the game to try to teach people, man. Not focusing on the lethal stuff right now. Well, this is a dead draw, and that sucks. I hope I'm not getting cursed. Never punish. Are you attacking? Four damage off lethal. I hope I'm not getting cursed. Never punish. Disarm plus. Good for the hard fight. Do I need it, though? Actually, it's good with the fights coming up. It's good against both Time Eater and this guy. And look, now we can rest because we, we got hit. Mag, think of the nine months. We got slapped. We got slapped around a little bit. Pandaria, think of the 11 months. No, the real Danby dude. Think of the five gifted. I will be wearing a onesie. The upcoming uh, sponsorship. Think of the nine. Check, can we just get some love for all the subs, please? I really appreciate if you guys did that. I'm a guy who begs for, for monetary support all the time. You never have to listen to me. And tell me that you can you can tell me internally to fuck off. But when somebody does monetarily support the stream, suck them off, man, please. All that I ever ask. Are you attacking? You are. Which means it is always the multi-attack. They never do the non-multi-attack on turn one. I wonder if Whirlwind was just lethal. Ago, I, was caught lacking without a sub and frost I didn't. I didn't. Gasoline didn't. And a box of matches. I did nothing of the sort. I didn't do that. I, I didn't do that, chat. Do not believe them. These are lies and slander. Actually, keep that. I kind of regret, honestly, if I'm being honest. Honestly, if I'm being honest, what the fuck am I saying? If I'm being honest, I regret not taking the second... Um, second Dark Embrace. Bottled Flame. Chad. You're my Bottled Flame. What about an Uppercut Plus on turn one? Whirlwind's really good, obviously, with the Akabeko. But I'm thinking long term. Heart Fight. Oh, wait. This, does this just one... Hold on. Math me. Calculation. 8 plus 13. Okay. I forgot I to pay my content tax to my son Frost Prime underscore. Times 4. And he straight up 84. 360. I am being be afraid, chat. 84 plus 8 times 4 plus 84. Does not one shot the Act 4 elites. Does not one shot the elites in Act 4. That's all we were focused on there. Would it one shot? Because I'm pretty sure that Akabeko doesn't proc on the second whirlwind. I could be wrong on that, actually. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't proc on the second whirlwind in a Necronomicon situation. Sword Boomerang wouldn't be terrible there, but we don't need it. We've got uppy cuts. Uppies. Alright. There's a lot of cards in this fight that you just kind of want to get rid of, right? One of those definitely being... Um, one of those definitely being your, 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 uh... Why can't I fucking speak today, man? What the hell? <laughs> one of you being your disarms. This guy having two, one mana, two less strength. Really not gonna do a lot for you, you know? I should upgrade these. Honestly, you can just go like boom, 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 boom. It's so nice that you can just, again, you can use this as a target. I wonder if I can go infinite and kill this guy. What are your thoughts? I have an infinite here, but it takes bloodletting. <laughs> and I don't know if I want to commit that. If 
I had gotten the second dual wield off, maybe. Maybe I have it here. Oh, I, I think I have it. I just need to play one more bloodletting I can kill them. Maybe. Oh, no, I have it. Never mind. I'm still a fan of if they're ever going to patch this game again. Give me a participation trophy relic for killing this. The opposite of spirit poop. Call it spirit pogs and give us plus one score. Not possible with Sneko. Very possible with Sneko. What you smoking, baby? Could take the evolve here. It's really good for the um, the hard fight. Maybe I take that. Fuck! It's just so many powers going into this next into the into the boss. We need a drop kick mod similar to the backflip mod. <laughs> yeah, it's not guaranteed with Sneko, but you could still do it very easily because if they cost zero, they gain mana and stuff. And there's ways. It's less easy, but fuck it. I'm taking the evolve. Hey guys. Thank you for all the Poggy content. Got back into Isaac, cause of the god game a gauntlet and unlocked my first tainted character. Love Hope that. You have a wonderful day and get some YouTube worthy runs. Ooh. I mean, okay. Another dropkick. Hello, Frost. I come from the YouTube. Come Thanks for coming. Rise up. I don't think I need another dropkick. It's cool, but I don't need it. Definitely don't need demon form. That's a little bit, a little bit on the nose there, of getting into the too much, too much stuff. Evolve me. I'm probably gonna try to exhaust that in this fight though. Probably try to get rid of it. Definitely playing this. And then you can play this. These guys don't attack on turn one, right? So I can just blap, blap, clap. Baby order. <laughs> Who's to say, really? Dark Embrace definitely gonna be playing. Gonna pick what you're gonna play and pick what you're not gonna play, you know? Don't wanna I don't think I wanna play that. I don't think that's all that necessary. So yeah, I think we can definitely draw this many. Don't think I want to dual wield that. I could actually exhaust this one, maybe. Definitely exhausting the evolve, though. Just gotta pick what you want to play, you know? Pick what you want to play. Do I want to play anger right now? I don't think so. Alright, good turn. Good turn. Oh, Necronomicus. The greatest card in my entire deck. Ooh. I love it, man. I love this Necronomicus, man. So good. All right, next turn we probably just go infinite, yeah. Sponsor Sigma starts at 1 p.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate you uh, wanting to come by for it. Means a lot. Thanks, fam. Oh my god, they're attacking again? What? <laughs> Surprised face? You can do that? I was hoping to draw the one of those again, but that's fine. Keep schmacking them. I took one damage there because of my incense burner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that. Necronomicus, 07. Die. Not the best turn. <laughs> In terms of turns that I could have had here, look at all of these cards I could have drawn. <laughs> Let's draw them. Fuck, man. It was so hard to low roll. What the hell, dude? <laughs> Th 
that was seemingly impossible to low roll. Am I dead? I'm not dead. It's not doing 60 damage. I'm fine. It's not copium. I prefer fighting you. You're not that hard to kill, I don't think. This is a pretty shitty opening hand, all things considered, but... Fuck. <laughs> okay, stop fucking low rolling, Tristan. How about that? What if we just don't low roll anymore, man? Thoughts? I think you have to weaken him here. Play that. And then play this for a little bit of dex. Come. Are you attacking? Ooh! <laughs> cool. Um. We should be good. Dual wield pommels. It's not bad. And also dual wield recklesses, actually. That's really good, I think. Dual wield reckless charge. And then Giga Second Wind. Nice. Incense burner me. Are you attacking again? You are! I actually really love that you are. That's awesome. I support you in the attacks that you want to do here. I support your attacks. Just want to let you know that. This guy supports your attacks. Recklessly charge him. Disarm him. Am I dead? <laughs> oh, man. Nah, they're at minus one strength. I don't think I ever die here, right? If I play slime. Hello, Necronomicers. It's great to see you, buddy. And then next turn, they're always going to try to go back to their health. Yeah. Look a little bit. It's not a big deal. Is it better for me to just play this to draw? There is another slime down there. Let's, let's heal. What if I just do this? And then I just I just go next. I think this is go next. I think it's a good go next. Thank you for subscribing. If I can kill him next turn, that's ideal. Hey! How's it going? So Yo. Are you attacking? You are! <laughs> Sorry. I'll stop acting like I'm actually surprised when they're attacking. <laughs> I'll, st I'll stop. Next time. Next time I'll stop. I won't stop now, though. Absolutely, I will not stop right now. Please, no. Amp up the reaction every time. You're attacking again? What? Since when? Dead. Did I gain HP in that fight? Ver Ver Yo, Vericity, thank you for the 11 months. Present. Jazz Boy, thank you for the follows. What's the sponsor? 30 minutes, baby. 30 minutes. Also, I set up my incense burner. Like I said, we wanted to kill next turn so we could set up incense burner to have incense burner on turn two of the elite fight when the, the guy on the right does big stabby move and sometimes the guy on the left attacks. Sometimes. It's an easy rest. Just give me the HP. Thank you for the shout out to come, gang. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Honestly, like maybe just a lantern. Straight up. Just could do a lantern. Is Vajra Whirlwind one shot? <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, it definitely one shots with like bloodletting. Does it one shot? Let me see. 
Wait, did I do the math completely wrong and nobody told me when I said 13 times? <laughs> nobody told me that I did the math completely wrong the first time. So I didn't take into account that my whirlwind was upgraded. That's fine. 17 times four. No, I don't think I did it. I don't think I did it wrong, right? Because it's 17 times four, right? 68. And then it's uh, eight or nine times four, which is oops, 68 plus 36. Somehow got less than the last time. I did my math so poorly at one of those times. We can't see your math. If it was up your butt, you know. It. Um, could take the Sentinel. It's not terrible. It's an okay take. It's an okay take. But like I said, it's an okay take. I don't think I need it. You said 13 times eight the last time. How the fuck did I get that? Jesus. <laughs> Dad, am I dumb? Wait, hold on. Are you attacking is the question? The guy, this guy always attacks on turn one, but are you? You are not. Okay. It's good to know. Good to know. Because that means next turn you are. Ah! You know? Are you attacking slash genuine? Shut the fuck up. Have you considered that? Have you considered shutting the fuck up? Okay. So both of these guys are attacking this turn, but we take no damage. All good. All good. We take one damage. Uh. What the hell? Hank. I love the Hanky mode. The Hanky mode never gets old to me. Uh, you're sometimes attacking, but you're always doing the big attacks. So just give me your strength. <laughs> Lend me your strength. I do believe I'm blocking. Sick. Uh, I think you're attacking this turn too, which is kind of awkward. A block for nine. Is that enough? Oh. <laughs> or a calcum and a skill potion. Iron wave? Wait, hold up. I think I love this iron wave here. I think I love this iron wave. Yes, please. All right. The final fight. Chad, this is the heart fight. It's the last one that you can do. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, benefit of the heart fight, Centennial Puzzle. Just fucking happens, which is awesome. I love that. Are they attack? <laughs> uh, uppercut's great for this fight, though. Disarm him. And I think that was a good turn. I think that was a solid turn. I don't think we need to do much else. We could pommel strike in order to gain more stuff. I think anger is actually good. Because we're going to have evolve in play. So I think anger is actually pretty good to gain the decks here. I could offering. I fucking could. Like, I, I legit just could. Why do you like Iron Wave? Because all of our other cards exhaust. Also, I didn't set up our incense burner in this fight. No, I did. Because I'm so smart. So, like, knew what I was doing right from the get-go, you know? <laughs> um... This is a good second win turn, right? Do I like the spot weakness at all? Do I care about the spot weakness? Maybe I just purity instead? <laughs> evolve. And that's fantastic that we got the evolve off. That was all worth it. Everything we just did is now worth it. We do have one last power in order to proc our, uh, our orange pellets here. Are they attacking, though? I'll never know! <laughs> I could dual wield this into flame. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. What are you, what are you, high? Kinda wanna leave this slime for some draw, I'm not gonna lie. 
Uh, if this is the multi attack, we're taking zero damage. If it's the big attack, we need to block things. So we should do that. That's a lot of block. Let me tell you what, that's a lot of block. Yep. You're dealing exactly 50. Oh, no, you're dealing exactly zero. And then on this turn that I'm incense burned, I'm also taking exactly zero. That's so cute that you would do that. So incredibly cute that you would do that. Love that. But you are attacking, though. They are notably, though, attacking. Chad, have you learned something yet today? Yes or no? Dual wield on the drop kick. They're not attacking this turn, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Is there a way to determine if the heart's going to do the big attack or the small attack? Uh, yes. Don't take Runic Dome. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Can I fucking die this turn? Wait, hold on. No, because they're weakened. Nope. And because that blocks for holy shit. Uh, are they attacking though? Yeah, at most this guy's dealing 60 if it's the multi-attack, but then he's weakened, so it's 45. It's perfectly fine. And now, you're just fucking dead. Yo, Tristan, they attacking. Yo! All right, Necronomicon turned out to be the biggest playmaker here in Lesson Learned. Uh, take Necronomicon, because I questioned it for half a second, and it was wrong. I was wrong. The teacher was wrong. I was wrong. Hey, part of being a teacher is always learning. So true. So true. So true. Necronomicon stands for Necromancer Comicon. Yeah, the publishers of Megacrit, or the publishers of Slay the Spire Megacrit, the devs of Megacrit, always go as necromancers to Comicon. That's super true.